Today, we're going through the entire MKU offseason where one of our players makes a shocking decision. It was milestone after milestone for the Seismos in season number two, gaining our first Mountain West championship and our first bowl victory. Nine total wins in season number two was way more than we were bargaining for. And with a young core and plenty of freshman starters this season, every player will get four years of development and there's nowhere to go but up, right? To be completely honest, this is a huge offseason for us. It is as big as winning the Mountain West championship or winning our first bowl game because there is so much to go over and we're really just banking on the progression of key contributors who could always regress because we are using the dynasty tool and stagnation and significant regression is always a possibility with the dynasty tool that we use for player progression. If you're a Seismo fan right now, you need to put every ounce of faith and hope into the progression of key contributors because the tool that we use for progression can cause guys to regress just as easy as they can progress. It's not just a guaranteed plus five overall increase for everybody every year. That'd just be too simple. So while one of the goals in this episode is to just keep chasing the gold standard in East Carolina, I also think we need a much harder experience in the Mountain West Conference. Let's face it, we're nowhere close to the top 25 yet because our conference was so weak. Most of our conference games were very close, but we still seem to scrape by at the end of games. So I have some plans. I want more competition in this conference as we continue to get better. And I think I have some pretty good ideas about how we're going to get that done. So there's the game plan. Chase ECU and make a more competitive Mountain West. We had five freshmen win first team all conference, but stagnation and regression could totally kill that momentum next year. And what looks like eight more players make second team all conference, almost all of them being freshmen. So with MKU's emergence, I think we need to see some more talent make its way into the Mountain West. Even a little bit of regression could kill a lot of the momentum that we built in season two. I do love the story of the Seismos' nine wins in close games with quarterback Josh Hayes really coming on and leading the team in the second half of the year with 38 touchdowns and 19 interceptions with only one of them coming in the final four games of the year. I know a lot of you have made Tampa Bay Bucks Jameis Winston comparisons for Josh Hayes, but he got Tom Brady treatment in terms of his supporting cast. Yaz Beecher and Chris Briggs were his Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, and of course Clay Borsilla is his Gronk and he looks like he parties like him too. Add in a very improved second season for Vash Drapa, and the scariest part about this is all four of these guys are coming back, along with Sammy Graffy, who made big contributions in the receiving game, along with 564 yards on the ground, just coming shy of a thousand from scrimmage. Speedy Sammy is a sneaky good player. On defense, you have JL Scott, who won the Bidnarik Award after coming from nothing and exploding onto the scene with over 100 tackles. He put the college football world on notice with 13 TFLs, four sacks, and two interceptions, establishing himself as the biggest surprise in the league this year. He wasn't without help though, as Taylor Adams frequently played in the box with him, along with Daniel Ruxin. The three of them are best friends on and off the field and made life a nightmare for opposing running backs. And surprises, how about walk-on freshman Nick Buckley, who had his best game in the bowl game. He had nine total sacks on the season with 22 TFLs, both of which led the team. Hakuna Matata, the fellow walk-on, looks like a key cog in the middle, and we saw flashes from Malachi Washington. Our defensive line, even though they're losing Matthew Wisniewski, is one of the most promising units on our entire team. We're losing legendary kicker Jenny Urbanowski, who only missed two kicks in her entire career. She had ice in her veins the entire season, and we can't give a season recap without talking about her. Just a really fun year for the Seismos, where they led the entire nation in passing yards, although they came second to last only to a Mike Leach team in total rushing yards. I'm curious to see if we'll see a more balanced offense in season number three with the upcoming changes to the team. Our defense was on the field more than any other in college football, and they gave up over 600 more yards than the next closest team, which is something we really have to see improve if we want to see sustained success at the next level. I'm looking forward to going over our new recruiting class because I think it's going to really help with this defense, but one thing's for certain, we can't expect to have success in this league with the worst defense in college football by every single metric, and that's something we have to work to fix today. We had nine freshman All-Americans, three on offense and six on defense, but look at Coach Rover's former school ECU. They had six freshman All-American players and they won the national championship, so they're not going away anytime soon. That's a key storyline in this series. And of course, winning the national title also comes with a busted recruiting class. Unlike us, they have free range at pretty much whoever they want, and most of their incoming freshmen are better than our best player. Oh, and what a shocker after a nine-win season. We're getting a contract extension. Coach Rover, the talent developer, up to a B-plus prestige and winning some hardware along the way. We're signing that contract after a successful year, up to a two-star prestige. I take this absolutely personally. Cooper Juxley goes back to East Carolina, his alma mater, to become ECU's new offensive coordinator. That is completely unplanned, first of all, and a total punch in the mouth. College football is a crazy world, man. And we talked about how the Mountain West is gonna become more competitive, and that starts with Hawaii firing their head coach, 
Randy Bates, and they've offered the job to ECU defensive coordinator Boomer Brooks, who's a very good friend of his former coach Bender Rover, played outside linebacker for ECU while Rover was coached there, and he's going to start his first head coach stand in the Mountain West against his former coach. If you're a nerd like me and you enjoy stats, I did make a dynasty tracking spreadsheet. If you want to view the Sizemo season in greater detail, it goes over basically everything from last season and this season. Quite honestly, we're not losing nearly as much as we could be, which is very good considering we have a huge team of freshmen. Outside of these first five guys here, everybody else is kind of just a role player, didn't get a whole lot of playing time. I'm not going to go over everybody, but we'll start with Greg Klink, who honestly was a bit of a disappointment statistically. Just one of those guys who didn't really stand out, didn't make a big play more than once an episode or so. But the funny thing with Greg Klink is he actually won Mountain West Conference Player of the Week in the Conference Championship game just because he had an interception. So I guess that Greg can be a hero for that one. It's so bizarre because he was starting, but Keanu Rivas made the all-conference team over him. He was the captain of the defense for us, not because of his play on the field, but because of his character, and that's invaluable to a team. Can't help but think that Greg Klink set a good tone in that locker room. Legendary kicker, Jenny Urbanowski. Jenny was perfect on field goals in her junior season, 11 of 11, but that did fall to 14 out of 16 as she attempted more kicks. Also, we kicked 59 point afters this year, so maybe her leg was just tired. Jenny Urbanowski, legendary career. You will be missed. One of the most consistent players in the entire series so far, Matthew Wisniewski. He kind of had to do everything himself in his first year, so he had a few more tackles and an extra sack, but nine sacks in two years, not too shabby. And the biggest thing for Matthew is he really took walk-on freshman Hakuna Matata under his wing, showed him his motor, and he looks ready to take over his spot next year. Thomas Pontillo, a little quiet in season number two, but one of my favorite players in season number one with 538 yards on 41 receptions. Hugh Johnson kind of overtook his spot after that big touchdown he had in the Boise State game. But Thomas Pontillo, 6'8", 245, full of character. Kind of just a do-it-all, but not super well guy. Still the type of player that you gotta miss. We're losing our starting center, Christopher Hornsworth, who didn't have a single pancake. He prefers waffles, that's understandable. Zier McCoy didn't really do much, but one of my favorites from year one who disappeared completely in year two was O-Man. He was one of my favorite players in season number one, always making plays, and it seemed like when he was on the field in season two, if Daniel Ruxin or JL Scott was down, O-Man was gonna step up and make big time plays. You gotta appreciate him for being a 57 overall, but still finding ways to make plays. You just gotta have heart. Uh, Donnie Watson, a guy who really did not get enough carries. I know Benson Bird kind of eclipsed him for that change of pace role. Last season, he had 60 carries for 144 yards. He had under 200 yards rushing for his whole career, but he did have 244 yards receiving in the screen game. He didn't have a chance in season one, and by the time season two ran around, he just got buried on the death chart. And then the rest of these guys didn't really do anything. Blaze Nua literally threw one pass, completed it for 10 yards. He's going out with 100% completion. So here are all the players leaving, but I'm afraid the drama does not end there. We've got some more news. You guys have to understand, college football is a changing landscape. NIL deals are being passed around like Instagram models in the NBA. You guys have to understand today, nobody is safe on this team. Boomer Brooks' new school, Hawaii, had some graduations, one of them being their starting quarterback, Chevon Cordero. A new era of Seismo football starts now. JL Scott, 2014 Benark winner, first team all-conference, first team all-American, has announced that he will be transferring to the East Carolina Pirates, who just lost linebacker John Chadwick to graduation. I mean, who can blame him, right? He established himself as the best young linebacker in college football, and he's gonna go play for a team that hasn't lost a game in two years. He's shooting for the NFL, but the saga is not over. Star freshman quarterback Josh Hayes spent the entire season hiding because of hate comments. This sent him into a deep depression that lasted for most of the season, but he finally pulled himself out of it solely on a mission to prove his own fans wrong. And he won this team a Mountain West Championship, a bowl game, and won NCAA Player of the Week two weeks in a row. Yet for some reason, many Seismo fans still do not want him. And that's when Josh Hayes received a call from new Hawaii head coach Boomer Brooks to replace Siobhan Cordero and become the new starting quarterback of his former team's most bitter rival. This isn't about money. This is not about status. This is the revenge tour for Josh Hayes. And you can't complain in the comments section because you asked for this. Following their former coach, Boomer Brooks also recruited Cash Blackman, an 87 overall freshman wide receiver, and redshirt freshman TJ Smelter to join him at Hawaii. And then both and Josh Hayes get immediate eligibility. And that is just from ECU. Boomer Brooks hit the transfer portal hard this off season, and he managed to pull in some of the best transfers in the country off of his prestige alone. As players who were stashed on the depth chart have a chance to make 
the Mountain West great again, and leading that charge is now former Seismo Josh Hayes. I think it's fair to say that we are no longer the favorites in our own division, and it's going to be an uphill battle against Hawaii. And the real kicker on all of this is that all of these players have immediate eligibility. I know, I'm crazy. Boomer Brooks is one of the best recruiters in all of college football. He already has a maxed out recruiting tree. We arguably just lost our best offensive and defensive player from last season, so you better believe it's time to recruit. Thankfully, our scholarship class is entirely done, and we're just waiting on some walk-ons. We have 10 guys total, including the Josh Hayes replacement in Keegan Reed and the JL Scott replacement in Lee Dingle Prince. We also signed our best overall recruits ever in Jermaine Burks and Jordan Gilmore. Burks will look to give Keegan Reed another weapon, while Jordan Gilmore is replacing Matthew Wisniewski. We also managed to grab a potential number three corner, some more depth at tight end and offensive line, a running back to replace Donnie Watson's role, and a sort of iron athlete in Draven Brown who could play just about everywhere. We have the number 89th class coming into the final recruiting week, but we do have one more way to sign some prospects. Throughout the year, I look for some players who don't have any scholarships from other teams, and I try to keep them on the board as much as I can. Then if I simply remove each player from my recruiting board, there's a slight chance that they will join the class as long as I have space in my class, which I obviously do. Now the thing is, this is completely RNG. I could sign zero players or I could sign 15. I have no way of knowing. In my attempt to try and record face cam, I ended up not recording any gameplay at all for this section, so I apologize, but we won't get to see the actual recruiting screens here. However, at signing day, we signed 17 commits after eight walk-ons decided to come to MKU. And we got great production out of last year's recruiting class, but this incoming class is even better. I moved athlete Draven Brown to free safety where he became a 74 overall and an instant starting caliber player. But our other athlete, Keegan Reed, is arguably more exciting as he has better throwing stats than Josh Hayes had coming in, along with elite mobility. Those players, along with key pieces like Jermaine Burks, Jordan Gilmore, and Lee Dingle Prince, has me even more optimistic about our future. Unfortunately, the training results footage was also lost, but there's no question that our team is even better on paper. I emphasized the importance of development of our freshmen earlier in the video, and I was relieved to see that training results was a net positive. With the extra members of our recruiting class, we have far more depth than last year, and I'm interested to see if our offense can evolve with a new speedy QB, which is a luxury that we haven't had up to this point in the series. Our offense showed flashes down the stretch, but they're even more dangerous now. Our receiving core added our highest rated recruit ever in Jermaine Burks, who will slide right into the mix with Chris Briggs and Yas Beecher. And while they aren't too flashy, don't forget about the offensive line as this is easily the best unit we've had. And with two sophomores and three freshmen, we're only going to get better. This goes the same with the defense as the guys who played well last year are even better this season with another year under their belts. And this year's freshman additions will help us out immediately and down the road. There's a lot to feel good about with the Seismo teams, but the Mountain West won't be handed to them again this year, especially if new rival quarterback Josh Hayes has something to say about it. He progressed nicely in the offseason after leading the Seismos to a conference championship and leading the nation in passing. But no team improved more on paper than Hawaii this offseason, and they'll be out to prove it. All in all, this finally feels like a real rivalry, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. While on the topic of our schedule, we're playing three ranked teams in non-conference play this year, including number one East Carolina. They're back-to-back -back national champions and haven't lost a game in this entire series. They're showing no signs of slowing down with the number one ranked recruiting class and a new weapon in JL Scott. They continue to be our biggest challenge every single season, and you have to wonder if we'll ever catch up to them as we continue to improve. I'm looking forward to season number three of this dynasty, and I hope you are too. Click the end screen to see more of my content as we get ready for a new era of Seismos football. My name is Jack. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you to Patreon supporters Buck Knife, Caden Gornstead, Jason DeMarco, Maki Harukawa, Slim Marley, Tikling24, Christian Horn, Krizzy the King, Dalton Jet, John Pankava, Jordan, Matthew, Nicholas Buckley, Pum, Taylor Adams, and Time to Selly.